Stop. Don't buy that HTC Vive Cosmos VR kit yet. This is a serious warning against pre-ordering, especially before the post-release reviews come out. There's a number of things we think that you should know about before buying, so please stay tuned and share this video with your friends. We believe you'll be doing them a service while simultaneously supporting this channel in providing the VR community with the most detailed virtual reality news. I am Destroy Troy, and I will be your host through the Aperture. Welcome to the VR Aperture, your source for the most detailed news in virtual reality and reviews from an engineer's perspective. Right out of the gate, my first criticism is not specifically with the HTC Vive Cosmos, but with the coverage that it's receiving. We feel that they're not giving you the full story. For example, Engadget.com, a major review site, the article that they put out last week had the headline, VR never looked so good. In contrast, a couple of months ago when they reviewed the Valve Index, the headline was impressive, expensive, inconvenient. My specific criticism here is that Engadget makes no mention of the high price for the HTC Vive Cosmos, but was in the headline for the Valve Index. Additionally, a major YouTube VR review site by the name of MRTV or Mixed Reality TV, their headline is currently in regard to the Vive Cosmos that it has a big surprise. Let's take a closer look at some of these assertions, but let me start by explaining the HTC Vive Cosmos. The Vive Cosmos looks like a standalone unit, especially in that it has the inside out tracking like many of the other standalone VR head visors. And although it was the original concept was to tether it to a mobile device, their market is definitely to the high-end gaming community, being that it's a PC-based tethered unit and it's higher price tag. The Vive Cosmos' biggest claim to fame, especially according to Engadget, is its higher resolution. It, according to the Vive website and Engadget, the, it is equipped with a 2880 by 1700 display which is supposedly an 88% increase over the original Vive, but I assert that this is a deceptive claim. One being that resolution for VR visors is typically listed per eye, and because they made no comparison to the current competitors, their comparison is to what is now about a four-year-old VR kit, and pretty much the first widely purchased VR kit ever. If you adjust the numbers for per eye and make a more fair comparison with its current competitors, those numbers become 1440 by 1700 for the Vive Cosmos versus 1440 by 1600 for the Valve Index, which is only and a hundred pixel increase in a single dimension. So very quickly, that number becomes fairly insignificant. And although Engadget is technically correct in saying that this is an improvement in resolution over its other VR units on the market, excluding the 4K Pimax, claiming that VR in a literal sense never looks so good is misleading at best in our opinion in that there is a variety of new image enhancing technologies and techniques that were left out of the cosmos and were left unmentioned in these articles for example the refresh rate for the vibe cosmos is stuck at 90 hertz where the index has moved on to 120 and is working on 144 the field of vision of the Vive Cosmos is still stuck at 110 degrees, despite the fact that the Valve Index has increased by up to 20 degrees. The lenses for the Cosmos are still the same lenses as in the original Vive, which if you've had the opportunity to use the original Vive, the concentric circles in 
those Fresnel lenses are quite pronounced in comparison to the Valve Index where Valve had re-engineered a new lens for their current visor and resulting in much smaller concentric circles. Uh, HTC did, however, swap out the displays for an LCD to provide a reduced screen door effect, but they make no mention of the lower persistence that accompanies the LCD, typically accompanies the LCD screen, and was half the claim by Valve Index for why they included LCD screens instead of OLED, which is kind of the current trend amongst high definition televisions. And in addition to that, the Vibe Cosmos does include an IPD adjustment, which customizes the distance between the pupils for the given user. They did not include an eye relief adjustment, which means that you cannot adjust the distance of the display from your face. Not anywhere have I seen that this is included in the current model. Moving on to the next headline by MRTV or Mixed Reality TV, the Cosmos has a big surprise, being that there is a mod available day one which will make the Cosmos compatible with the Steam VR laser tracking system, which is considered to be the gold standard and is also quoted as being so by Virtual Reality Oasis, another major VR review site. I would argue that this is less of a feature as much as it is a marketing technique to present the Cosmos as cheaper than the Valve Index, but equally advanced. So whereas the Valve Index was listed for $999, the Vive Cosmos is listed at $699, a dramatic decrease in price, and will work right out of the box without additional equipment. But let's talk about the features that you get for that value. Controllers are included for that $699 price, and I have nothing negative to say about the controllers. They seem perfectly fine. They lack the, the finger tracking that the Valve Index controllers have, but they have the thumbstick and done away with the touch sensor, and they have top face buttons and a grip button. Also, the Vive Cosmos includes inside-out tracking for easier setup. There's no additional sensors required for purchase or setup. Also, the Vive Cosmos offers on-ear headphones and a flip-up face for easy transitioning from virtual reality to the real world. It is compatible with the previous generation wireless adapter, advertises crystal clear graphics, and a tracking mod that makes it compatible with the Steam VR laser tracking. But let's take a closer look at those features. The inside out tracking is a camera based system, which is inferior to external laser tracking. For one, many games require you to reach behind your head or behind your back to pull out additional weapons, change your weapon or pull out your inventory bag and all current standalone tracking systems lose tracking when you reach behind your head or behind your person. Additionally, they can lose tracking when one controller eclipses another. So although I said there's nothing specifically wrong with the controllers, they will lack the tracking ability and precision that comes with the laser tracking system. Additionally, the controllers are tracked by a light pattern on the controllers. It's an interesting pattern and that's how it follows it. And for this reason, the controllers are likely to face the same short battery life issues of other light pattern tracking controllers. Whereas the Valve Index controllers advertise eight hours of battery life. And forgot to mention, that the controllers with the Vive Cosmos use AA batteries. So you're either gonna be pouring through disposable batteries or you're gonna to have to get rechargeable batteries for it, which you'll have to remove to charge and put back in, whereas the Valve controllers just plug in by USB. The on-ear headphones included with the Vive Cosmos will very unlikely compare with the Valve Index off-ear headphones, which were 
highly praised by all review by all sources in that it provides a very unique audio effect. It sounds more like the sounds are coming from the room you're in rather than inside your head from the from earphones. The crystal clear graphics they claim as part of the value. We've already mentioned that the resolution is only a hundred pixel increase in a single dimension. And although they have swapped in an LCD display to reduce screen door effect, they've made no mention of the lowered persistence. The Vive Cosmos uses the old lenses from the original Vive, a four year old model. It has an IPD adjustment, but no eye relief adjustment, no improved refresh rate, no improved field of vision. And if you're planning on getting the full laser tracking system, I have to warn you that in addition to requiring the mod faceplate and having to purchase the, light, the external lighthouse sensors, you're gonna need to buy new controllers. No one else, as far as I've seen reviewing the Cosmos, has mentioned this, and this fact is only mentioned on the Vive website in very small print. I believe they're trying to hide this fact or they're trying to obscure this fact because the controllers that come with the Vive Cosmos are not compatible with the Steam VR laser tracking system. It uses a different technology, it uses light pattern tracking. And I know the, the Lighthouse sensors, that, that name is confusing because it's a lighthouse and I'm saying it's different technology from the light pattern tracking, but they're only called lighthouses because it's a laser system that spins around like a lighthouse. So they're totally different and the controllers are not compatible with it. And additionally, if you were merely planning to upgrade your current VR kit or your current VR system, you could get away with only paying $499 by buying the Valve Index Visor because it is sold separately from the controllers and the sensors. Whereas the Vive Cosmos is not sold individually and but combined with the controllers for the price of $699. So if you were planning on just upgrading, instead of paying $499, you will pay $699 and you'll get a pair of controllers that are incompatible with your setup. So since we're already talking about price, we'll move on to the last leg of my argument. Like I mentioned before, the Valve Index is criticized for its price, whereas the Vive Cosmos is not. But if you do a direct comparison in cost, the Vive Cosmos with controllers versus the Valve Index with controllers, one is 699 and one is 749 and includes all those features I mentioned that the Cosmos is lacking, in addition to having much, much more advanced controllers, far more advanced. Though admittedly, the Valve Index will not work out of box for that price, you'll have to get the base stations, but if you are wanted that full high precision tracking system, you're gonna need those sensors anyway. Which brings me to what the total cost would be if you, your plan from the beginning is to get the Cosmos and the, the mod faceplate for the Steam VR laser tracking, first you have $699 for the visor, which includes controllers that are not compatible, $60 for the mod, $270 for the 1.0 tracking systems, not the 2.0 tracking stations. This is yet another more evidence that the relationship between Valve and HTC not only expired, but broke down because HTC is apparently not, does not have the permission to say that it's compatible with the Valve 2.0 base stations, the same that the Valve Index cannot claim that it's compatible with the Vive wireless adapter. But I digress. The two, the only external tracking sensors at this point that are compatible with the Vive Cosmos are the 1.0. So 
So for your money, you will not even get the latest and greatest as far as a tracking system goes. It's highly likely that the Vive Cosmos will work with the Valve Index 2.0 base stations, maybe with some tweaking, maybe, maybe out of the box, who knows. But Vive Cosmos consumers won't be able to buy the base stations for the $280 that Valve Index customers got it for because it's not available in a bundle with the Cosmos, so they'll pay the full $300. So back to, to the total, $699 for the visor with controllers that are incompatible, $60 for the mod, $270 for the previous generation 1.0 tracking base stations, a minimum of $260 for the controllers if you're gonna get the wands, which I don't recommend, or $300 for the knuckles, and that ends up with a grand total of $1,330. So, let me ask you, which visor, which VR kit is the expensive one? And which one is a better value for your money? My conclusion is that, sure, you can break into high-end PC-based VR with access to full steam, the full steam VR library at a reduced cost, but it will be at the expense of many of the high end features, quality and precision. HTC has tried this in the past where they came out with a newer visor that was the Vive Pro with a higher sticker price from their previous generation, but was highly criticized because the only real advancement was the resolution and wasn't enough to justify the $300 increase in price for people to upgrade to. And really the original Vive was just a better value altogether because it was sold in a package with the controllers and sensors for $500, whereas that $800 unit came with nothing but the visor. So they've done this before. I believe that's what they're doing here again. They've just only increased the resolution. And then really, mostly, that's all they've really done. And as part of my conclusion, I would say that had it been marketed in the reverse as a lighthouse laser tracking VR kit that has the added benefit of being mobile, meaning if you wanted to take it to your friend's house, you wouldn't have to break down the sensors and take them over to your friends and set them back up with all, you know, all that setup. You could just grab your visor and your, your mobile controllers as what they would be. And you could give, you know, your friends or family most of the VR experience at the sacrifice of some of the more seamless tracking and improved features. So had it been marketed that way with its mobile option, then I might say the Cosmos has a surprise or a bonus feature that the others don't have that sets it apart. But with the way it is, it's actually more of a limitation. So in wrapping this up, the Vive Cosmos attempts to be the best of both worlds in that it's attempting to be a high-end PC-based tethered unit and a reduced entry-level price point but does neither very well, considering that it, it would be the most expensive amongst the entry-level visors and would be the least feature-rich amongst its current competitors. So like I said, sure, you can break into high-end PC VR gaming with this as long as you never intend to upgrade it to the laser VR tracking system. It will become exorbitantly more expensive and you would have been far better off getting the valve since it's it's ready right out the gate and needs nothing additionally to make it work so thank you again for tuning into the vr aperture we really appreciate you tuning in we hope that we provided you some valuable information that you didn't otherwise have and will help you in your purchasing decision we welcome you to leave a comment below Leave a comment if you agree with us. Leave a comment if you completely disagree with us and think we don't know what we're talking about. We are always open to a discussion and we look forward to it. Once again, thank you for watching and have a great rest of your week.